June. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be experiencing Poland. Poland is a country in Central Europe. Its official name is Republic of Poland and is on the east of Germany. The Czech Republic and Slovakia are to the south, Ukraine and Belarus to the east, and the Baltic Sea, Lithuania, and the Russian exclave Kaliningrad to the north. Most Polish people live in large cities, including Warsaw, Łódź, Krakow, Stettin, Gdansk, Wrocław, and Poznan. I've been to Gdansk, Gdynia, Sopot, Krakow, and at the airport of Warsaw, meaning that I haven't really seen the city. But it is the capital of the country, so let's travel there first. There are many places to visit there. Old Town Market Square is located in the oldest part of Old Town, which dates back to the late 13th century. It was totally destroyed by bombs in World War II, and after the war, it was restored to its pre-war condition. Many restaurants surround the square, so it would be a perfect place to taste Polish specialties. The market square features a bronze sculpture of the Warsaw Mermaid, the symbol of Poland's capital. There are several legends about the mermaid. One of them is that the mermaid decided to stay after stopping on a riverbank near the old town. Fishermen noticed something was creating waves, tangling nets, and releasing their fish. They planned to trap the animal, then heard her singing and fell in love. A rich merchant trapped and imprisoned the mermaid. Hearing her cries, the fishermen rescued her. Ever since, the mermaid, armed with a sword and a shield, has been ready to help protect the city and its residents. Sometimes this legend is expanded to say the little mermaid in Copenhagen is the worst mermaid's sister and they went separate ways from the Baltic Sea. Lazenki Park, which is also called Royal Beds Park, is the largest park in Warsaw. It was designed as a park in the 17th century and today it is a treasure trove of paintings collected by Polish royalty and statues of the country's greatest rulers. The royal castle served as the home and officials of Polish rulers for centuries. This castle dates back to the 14th century, when it was the official residence of the Dukes of Masovia. Nowy Swiat means New World Street, yet it is one of the most historic streets in Warsaw. In the 16th century, it was the primary road to the various castles, palaces, and rural villages. By the 20th century, it was one of Warsaw's primary commercial streets, but it was almost completely destroyed during World War II's Warsaw Uprising. It was restored following the war. The Warsaw Uprising Museum opened in 2004. Warsaw was famous for withstanding the Nazis during World War II. The Jewish ghetto where Jews were confined by the Nazis was the largest in Europe. The uprising, however, was not limited to Jews alone. The whole city joined the fight in 1944. Wilanow Palace is one of the most important monuments in Poland, representing what Poland was like before the 18th century. The palace was built as a home for King John III Sobieski, and today it is a museum that is home to the country's artistic and royal heritage. The Palace of Culture and Science is a multifunctional building that houses everything from companies to entertainment venues. When it was built in the 1950s, it was named for Joseph Stalin but changed when the Soviet leader fell out of favor, or abbreviated to Krakowskie, is one of Warsaw's most elegant streets, which dates back to the 15th century. This is a magnet I bought in Krakow. 
You can see many buildings of Krakow here. Krakow is one of the oldest and largest cities in Poland. Pope John Paul II was raised in this city and was its archbishop from 1964 until he was elected as Pope in 1978. The historic old town of Krakow provides attractive views to visitors with the facades of aristocratic buildings, the Slovak theater, the Little Market Square and the Tower of Town Hall. It's also a great place to start your walk along the royal route leading straight to Wawel Castle. The Wawel Castle was the residence of Polish kings, which is a massive complex with 71 impressive chambers open to the public. You will see the royal private apartments, the noble state rooms, impressive collections of paintings, sculptures, and the tombs of the Polish royals there. Virgin Mary Church is a Gothic church of Greek, which is one of the most picturesque landmarks of Krakow. It's composed of two towers of 69 and 82 meters, and the latter one is where the traditional melody of Haina Mariaki is played by a bakla once per hour. It's possible to climb the wooden stairs to the church to admire the panorama of the city. And the church has also the largest wooden altarpiece in the world, so don't miss it. Have you seen the movie Schindler's List? It's a movie from 1993 made by Steven Spielberg and it's based on the story of Jews saving Oskar Schindler. The story happened for real during wartime in this factory, which is now a museum. It is among the most worth visiting museums in Poland as devoted to the subject of Nazi occupation of Krakow and the fate of Jews whom the industrialist gave his helping hand. About 70 kilometers from Krakow is the Auschwitz concentration camp. It was a complex of over 40 concentration and extermination camps operated by Nazi Germany in occupied Poland during World War II and the Holocaust. It's not a place for entertainment and it's probably not suitable for family travels with young children. But I think it's worth to visit it once in a lifetime to see and feel the horrible history. 1.3 million people were sent to Auschwitz and 1.1 of them died. The death toll includes 960,000 Jews, most of whom were gassed on arrival, 74,000 ethnic Poles, 21,000 Roma, 15,000 Soviet prisoners of war, and up to 15,000 other Europeans. Those who were not gassed or died of starvation, exhaustion, disease, individual executions, or beatings. Others were killed during medical experiments. The city of Gdansk bounced back and forth of being German territory and Polish territory for hundreds of years. During the World War II, the whole Poland suffered under Nazi rule and at the end of the war, Gdansk had to endure heavy air raids by the Allied troops and the Soviets. The city was rebuilt in 1950s and 1960s by the architects who didn't want to rebuild the city with the original Germanic architecture. That's why the city looks more like Dutch or French now. The Lugitag is main street of Gdansk. There are places to stop by the beautiful Golden Gate, Main Town Hall, the Neptune Fountain, Artus Court, and so on. Walking down the both sides of Motlava River would be great. If you are interested, you can take a tour of the crane, which was used hundreds of years ago to load cargo into ships. While I was staying in Gdansk, I had one day trip to Gdynia and Sopot as well. I remember visiting a museum on a ship in Gdynia and walking along the coast in Sopot. I have here a few more things from Poland. This is a Polish pottery stoneware. Polish pottery is known to consumers from all over the world. Since the 17th century, the region Bolesławets has been a potter's community. Poland's ties with amber have a long history as early as the Neolithic period. Humans were crafting objects out of amber on Polish soil. 
This necklace and the brooch is what my dad bought for my mom maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago. And this necklace is what I bought for my mom 10 years ago. When I was in Gdansk, I was so lucky to have my Polish friend. I stayed at her house and her mom cooked several dishes for me. Everything I had was so delicious. One of them was the gulab tea, which is the cabbage rolls. Seasoned meat and rice are wrapped in boiled cabbage leaves. Many recipes also contain mushrooms and other types of stuffing. Plucky are potato pancakes, which are made from grated potatoes or sometimes mashed potatoes. They are fried in a frying pan with butter. Most people eat the potato pancakes with applesauce. Pierogi are perhaps one of the most widely known of Polish dishes. These stuffed dumplings commonly contain things like meat, sauerkraut, mushrooms, or potatoes. But sometimes they can be made sweet and stuffed with fruits or even chocolate. Bigos is another favorite dish made up of sauerkraut and meat. Zupa Grzybowa is a soup that can be made from a variety of mushrooms depending on what's available during a particular season. Klodnik is a cold soup that is made from beets, cucumbers, and dill, which looks similar to borscht as it has a red or pink color. The other famous Polish dish is the chesnina, which is made from duck blood. It has sweet and sour taste. It's time to make something from Poland. See you in the kitchen. Thank you for watching this video and see you next Friday. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!